Last week, I visited a kombucha couple with an impressive collection of aeroids and succulents. And today, they're going to show me how to make custom-made grow poles to house their rapidly expanding collection of vigorous climbers. Jacob Wood and Jasmine Edwards relocated to Queensland a couple of years ago after discovering their mutual plant passion when they added some real life to their small apartment in Perth. Now, your very first plant purchase was an aeroid, which is unusual. Why? They are a great space filler, and in a little one-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment in Perth, we wanted to make it more homely. Even though Jacob didn't like the Monstera at first, he fell into the rabbit hole of all the aeroids. But growing them is a little bit complicated, isn't it? It is. You kind of go through losing some and then having to figure out a way that works, so... <laughs> You get to know your plants. Now, the name philodendron, that's a classic aeroid. That means tree hugger. There are complications with things that want to keep growing. <laughs> Upwards. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's hard to give them a tree when you're in, a <laughs> in an apartment. So we tried a few different things, and one of those that we started to use for a while was sphagnum poles, which is like a wire mesh filled with sphagnum. But it had a few problems and a few drawbacks. One of those especially is its environmental concern of using, using sphagnum but also that they broke down over time, they changed colour over time, and they were hard to expand once your plant outgrew them. So what was the solution? So we talked to some other growers and we took some inspiration from what they were doing and we started using hydroponic felt wrapped around a PVC pipe. And it looks great for a long time and it's very expandable. So essentially, they're making artificial tree trunks. What materials do we need? So we need some PVC stormwater pipe. This one's 90 millimetres. And you'll also need some hydroponic felt some glue, a brush to adhere the felt on to the pipe, and some cypress chip to fill it. You also need a power drill with a bit. This one is a 25 millimetre. The PVC pipe is filled with bark, which acts as a slow-release water reservoir. The water seeps through the holes, and eventually the plant's aerial roots will grow through the anchoring felt and find their way inside the pole. Expanding your pole is simply a matter of making another and connecting the pipe to the top of the last. Hydroponic felt is available from hydroponic specialist shops and the glue is a common contact adhesive. So what's the first step? We'll start off by measuring the holes. So we'll start 10s on this side and we'll go every 20, so 30, 50, 70, 90. And you don't have to be exact. And we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing, but this time starting 20 down. Now it's time to drill the holes. And then we need to do the other side. So now we need to sand it off to remove the burrs from where we've cut it, but also to give the glue a good adhesion surface. Right. So just use a bit of sandpaper. This one is uh, 80 grit, but you can also use a dish scour if you like. So now that all the burrs are removed and the pipe's ready for glue, we'll uh, get gluing. I've pre-cut this felt to approximately the uh, circumference of the pipe. So I've got this about 330 mil, so it wraps around the pipe with a little bit of overhang. And then we'll get the glue that you've poured out, and we'll start brushing it onto the pipe. And you want to apply this very liberally, so all over the pipe, because um, you don't want the felt coming off. How long does the glue take to dry? It dries really, really quickly, which is why you want to almost put a bit of a thicker coat on, and then that way you've got some time to work with it. All right, once the glue's on and it's tacked up a little bit, just try and line it up square. And then you just roll it up nice and tight. Once you get to the end as well, it's always a good idea to put a little bit on the seam, unless you want to chop that off. And that's how you do it. But before we see the grow pole in action, this couple has another secret to their growing success. Jasmine, you've got a, another handy idea. We do, our soil. So we make our own mix because just your standard potting mix just doesn't cut it for us because we go through so much of it. 
And you're serious about making poly mix with that cement mixer. You use that all the time? We do, every time we make soil. So we, do, we can do 50 litres in the cement mixer and usually we'll make up 100 litres and we can go through that in a day, we can go through multiple in a day, or sometimes it'll last us a little bit. Wow. So, need something that can mix it a bit easier, and that's the solution. <laughs> so, what are the ingredients? So, we've got two parts of the natural cypress chip, four parts perlite, two parts vermiculite, one part of the composted chicken manure and one part of poya chip. And we've also got some fertiliser pallets and some mineral rock. Does it work well? It does. It works really well. So I'll take some out and I can show you. So it's coarse, it's chunky, it's got a really good amount of aeration and you can water as much as you want. So you can't overwater you your aerials. You cannot overwater them. Well done. <laughs> now, Jacob's going to show me how it all comes together. So this is the next step. We want to pot the plant up. I like to use a terracotta pot. I like to fill it with a bit of gravel at the bottom. This is just drainage gravel. And the reason I fill that with is otherwise the pipe might block the hole at the bottom of the pot. So this adds an extra layer of drainage so it can flow around the pipe and out the drainage hole. What I'll get you to do, if that's all right, is come around and support it for me and I'll pop this plant in. Okay. What I've got here is a philodendron tenue and it's got a nice root system. And this is where the couple's custom-made potting mix comes into its own. It's a bit of a tight fit, but we want to give it some time to focus on adhering to the pole rather than being worried about having to fill the pot up with some roots. So I'll get you to hold that on there, and I'll fill it up and pot it in. I'll pat it down and get it nice and secure, and then we'll start to use a bit of jute or just hemp twine. I like this because it breaks down over time, so if you forget to take it off, eventually the plant will just push it off. Good idea. Eventually it will develop aerial roots, which will wrap itself onto the pole and secure itself on. So just a simple knot or two will keep the plant nice and happy. Not too tight either. Okay, great. Okay. Now that's looking good, what we'll do is we'll fill the pole. That way it's got something to maintain the moisture. I like to use cypress bark, but you could also use an orchid bark, whatever you like. We're basically trying to create a, uh, a simulated tree here because these are epiphytes and they like to hang on to, uh, to an external surface. And the roots will grow through those holes Yep. And by adding water in the top, you've got a reservoir of moisture to supercharge the plants as well. Absolutely. You can even use it to fertilise your plant. You can put some soil release in the top. You can use it however you like. It will eventually... Uh, the water will drip down, merge out the holes and then wet the felt. Excellent. I reckon this couple are really onto something. They're experimenting as they go and they're sharing their knowledge. So, take a leaf out of Jacob and Jasmine's book if you're into aeroids, give it a try.